Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about summer 23 release features. I'm mostly going to focus on flow enhancements and some admin related enhancements. Please check out the release notes for any other features enhancements as well. Let's jump right into it. The first feature I want to talk about is around the flow and uh, flows are just being more reactive. From the last release, we saw that you can have LWCs within flow, which will react to um, different changes in the flow screen, which just makes it for a better user experience so they don't have to click around different screens. To do that, you have to first opt in into the reactive screen beta because this feature is still in beta and you want to make sure that um, you are opted in for that feature. So once you have that done that, you can also go ahead and update your flow um, into API version 57 or plus. Um, this is 58, which is the latest. You also can achieve the same in 57 version. So make sure that's there, otherwise it will not work as expected. So for the feature, let's talk about, um, I just have two numbers here. So for this release, you can now have formula fields that will react in the same screen. So what does that mean? I just have a number input field. That's a number on one and number two. So let's say you wanted to have certain calculation based on the user input. And I'm just going to add another number in the same screen. I'm going to call it sum of number and for the default value i want to use a formula here call it sum num and data type is number and insert resource i'm just gonna plus number one plus number two just doing a simple math get done i want to take it a step further another enhancement that salesforce also talks about is any standard and custom components are fully reactive within the same screen. So I am also going to add a date field. So this is just an input date. And for this default value, I will say, um, create a formula again. And how I want to calculate this, and it's a date type formula, I just want to make it today, which is today's date, plus whatever the calculated sum comes out to be. So let's say if it's a calculated sum is two, then I want to make it today plus two date. So let's just do that here. And hit done. All right, so if debug. And I'm just going to enter one, two. All right, so one plus two is three, and it calculated date to 4th May 2023. This is based on GMT calculation. Great. Um, so that works. And I know this uh, particular use case is not very exciting, but I can definitely see a lot of use cases around this. So, for example, if you have a pricing calculation or if you want to calculate um, anything based on the user input, uh, for now, the only way to do that was to have them clicking next and going to the next screen. So it just causes more confusion for the user. Um, but with this, you can definitely start to change some of your flows um, and try it out and see if that works for your use case. Next feature is uh, around data table. Um, so I already have get accounts here. I just queried all the accounts um, and that is all be being stored in the variable called get accounts. And I have the same screen flow. And if you have already seen this, um, this is the data table that I created. I just have the collection um, accounts from get accounts, and this is the new feature. So show search bar. So now you can have accounts or any um, data table. Users can search for that list right here. This is especially helpful if you have a long data table and you want users to click on certain things and take action. Um, so maybe um, you show them a list of accounts. They want to search certain accounts check the select those accounts and go to the next screen to do something with those accounts. That's usually the use case in this case. Um, you can configure columns, add any columns you like here and configure rows. I'm going to do row selection multiple. And if you go back to our debug here, I can now search for, let's say, edge communication. So this is not quite reactive. You have to hit enter to be able to search for that. And if you remove everything and hit enter again, it just comes back to the same one. 
And if you have noticed, if I do edge, hit enter, it just changes that to um, radio button. Go back and it removes the selection. So not very fancy yet, but I can definitely see this being solved in the next few releases. But for now, it's just going to select that one list that you selected and only select that if you and if you exit out of that the selection will be gone as you noticed all right let's talk about next feature that i'm super excited about is around email send and um, until now the emails that you send out of flow was never being logged into activity so let's say if you sent out an email on a contact creation or maybe an opportunity creation you sent an email out to the opportunity owner none of that email actions were being logged and if you want to log them you'd have to create a create uh, element and then actually log the task onto that opportunity. But with this release, those actually will get um, automatically attached to the activity. Well, there is a setting that you can set to get that attached. So let's see how to do that. Um, I'm just gonna create a new flow, call it a record triggered flow. Um, this will fire on contact update. For now, just to keep it simple, no condition requirements, I just wanna show you the email action hit plus i'm gonna choose action go to type for action and send email simple action test email um, body would be just test and this is the feature so log email on send and if you go to this hover it tells you that if you set it to true you must populate the recipient id or the related record id which makes sense because this is the what ID and this is the who ID. But make sure you are tying it correctly. So for related record, you want to only um, tie it to the record that it supports. For recipient ID, it needs to be who ID, which is lead or contact ID. And additionally, it also counts against your daily email sending limit. So be careful with that. I'm gonna make it true. For the recipient ID, I'm just gonna choose the record ID that fired this flow. And let's add a subject. We're done. And I'm going to activate this. And I have this contact already that is set to my email. And I'm just going to edit it and save it so that the flow gets fired. And you can see that I have the send email logged in as task pretty awesome and if i had a related id it would also be logged to the account for example if i wanted to do that great there are definitely some more flow features but these were the ones that i found most impactful if you want to check out more just go to salesforce flow section within the release notes and you will see some other enhancements there is another one around email where you can now use lightning email uh, with the email action so for that just go to flow builder updates and you'll find some other enhancements around that this is the one that I'm talking about. Use email templates in the send email action. Also very good. So there are some lots of email enhancements coming out. Now let's talk about some other platform enhancements. The first one is around uh, app manager. So you can now clone a custom app that you created. This is helpful when you have an app that your users are using. You want to launch a similar app to a different group of users, but you want to keep a lot of things similar. So you don't want to waste time uh, recreating the same app, which is nice that you can now clone it and for that it needs to be a custom app so in this case this is an app that i built and go here and clone it as you're cloning it you also will have the opportunity to change things maybe you want to call it something else obviously you don't want to call it clone change that name you can either go to quick save directly if you want to keep everything the same or go to next screen and change things uh, as needed i'm just going to exit out of this but this is also a time saving feature exit out of that um, next feature is around contact or person account fields. If you remember from um, Plastic, we used to have a field called salutation, but for some reason that was not available in Lightning, but now you will have that within the name section. So if you go to name field in your contact object, um, you can edit salutations directly from Lightning. No need to change to Classic to do that. You can add or remove any quick list values as you see fit. Another enhancement around the field is also now we have pronouns, which is really nice, um, being more gender inclusive. Um, you can have a pronoun 
standard. Um, if you already have a custom field, maybe you can consider to use the standard field instead. They also have certain values by default. Uh, next enhancement is around Lightning App Builder app pages. So if I go to my Lightning App Builder, you can now have tabs or accordion view on app page. I think those are already available in record pages. The reason it's awesome to have um, tabs or accordion is if you are heavily using app pages and if you have a ton of components that you want to show to your users without sacrificing the real state or the space on the screen, you can use accordion or tabs. These are some really cool ways to show different information and not overwhelm the user with the amount of information. So let's say if you wanted to distribute chatter, dashboard, other sales pipeline activities, things like that, you can add different tabs and show different components without sacrificing your space. So just having that option is awesome. And if you're not using app pages, maybe that's something to check out. Um, app pages, you can actually create tabs from them, especially if your users are um, have more custom needs um, and they need some sort of a dashboard or a command center of sorts. So app pages are really helpful for that reason. Um, next enhancement is also around Lightning app pages, but around record pages related list. So Salesforce has already been making a lot of enhancements around related lists. Um, last release, we had dynamic related list, which was awesome. You can have records filtered out in um, related list. This release, you can also have mass list actions from your related list. What do I mean by that? So let's say if you wanted to update a bunch of contacts from your account um, to certain status, or maybe you want to update all your contact addresses similar to account address, um, you can do all that using um, the new feature. So I'm just gonna have a related list for contacts here. And also going to add an action. So I already have created a lightning action on the contact and I'm calling it update contact address. Hit done and save. Now I'm gonna go back to the page. And you can see this checkbox. You can check um, as many contacts as you wanna update and just hit that box and update the address, save it, and all of the selected contacts will get updated. It's pretty awesome, especially if you have a lot of contacts or any things that you want to update right from your parent record. Things that will go to GA this release is around permission sets. From the last release, we can um, edit the permission sets right from the fields, uh, which makes it really easy for you to create custom fields and add them to certain permission sets or even edit existing field that was in beta before um, it's going to ga so if you have no idea what i'm talking about um, for example if you wanted to just update custom field um, field level security if you click on that you can now see all the permission sets with their object permissions and you can also give permissions to other permission sets right from here you no longer have to go to permission sets to make that change and all that is telling us is that salesforce is moving away from profiles more in the direction of permission sets and this is just another step towards that so if you are building new profiles or permissions definitely recommend um, choosing permission sets over profiles unless there are some reasons or some specific limitation that you're running into that is all the main features that i had um, again focused on flow and admin updates i highly recommend checking out the release notes if you haven't already there are some great nuggets around development as well, um, as well as any industry cloud if you are into, um, if you're using health cloud or experience cloud. Um, release notes are a great place to come to, especially you may be building something custom and you never know that something may be coming into the next release. So highly recommend checking that out. Also, there are some features that's getting retired. The one uh, that I wanna talk about is under general enhancements. The news and automated account fields is being retired. Um, I definitely had clients who used news. So if your client is using news component, that will be removed uh, from page layout. Um, looks like in winter 24. Um, also, when you create accounts, the logo and some fields are getting populated. Those will also be removed um, or retired. So again, um, release notes are a place where you get um, those information. So you can prepare your org and your users for any retiring features. 
hope all of these features were helpful thank you so much for watching please um, type in the comments if you have any other features that you like to call out um, it will be helpful for the community as well thank you so much for watching